It whirleth about continually, and the wind returneth again according to his servants. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. Unto the place from whence the rivers come, thither they return again. Verse 8, all things are full of labor. Man cannot utter it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. Is there anything whereof it may be said, See, this is new. It hath been already of old time, which was before. There is no remembrance of former things, neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after. I, the preacher, was king over Israel in Jerusalem, and I gave my heart to seek and search out by wisdom concerning all things that are done under heaven. This sore travail hath God given to the sons of man to be exercised therewith. I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and, behold, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. That which is crooked cannot be made straight, and that which is wanting cannot be numbered. I commune with my own heart, saying, Lo, I am come to great estate, and have gotten more wisdom than all they that have been before me in Jerusalem. Yea, my heart had great experience of wisdom and knowledge, and I gave my heart to know wisdom and to know madness and folly. I perceived that this also is vexation of spirit, for in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. Let's pray. Our Father, we're grateful this morning uh, to be in the house of God. Thank you for the sweet spirit. Father, our prayer is you'd help us today. Lord, we're in desperate need of you. We can't do, we can't do anything in, in and of ourselves. We're helpless and hopeless in this flesh. Well, it's no good thing. And so, Lord, I ask that you touch the unprofitable servant. I ask that you speak to my heart as I speak into the hearts of your people. I pray you anoint us afresh and anew. Give us that which we need to preach. Lord, we're desperate this morning. Please. Speak to the hearts of your people. And Father, what do you do for us? We'll thank you. We'll praise you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Here we find Solomon is giving his commentary on life, if you will. His take on this earthly life can be summed up in verse number 2. Vanity of vanities, saith the preacher. Vanity of vanities. All is vanity. Here is the wisest man to ever live outside of the Lord Jesus. Here is a man that had untold riches. Right. I mean, he would make Bill Gates look like a beggar. I mean, he is, uh, the word billionaire does not even describe the wealth that he had. Right. He had more gold and silver and wealth than any other man uh, on the planet. You will find that he owned homes and lands and orchards and vineyards and all. He had all the land that he, you could desire. He had built fine homes. He had right. uh, several different houses. You will find that he built the greatest temple Israel had ever seen. Right. You will find this man uh, built that grand temple. Uh, he wore the finest clothes. Uh, you would, matter of fact, Jesus even mentions it. He said uh, Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed as one of these. Talking about one of the flowers. Yeah. Right. So even Jesus references what a sharp dresser Solomon, Solomon was. He had men servants, women servants. He had men singers and women singers. He had musicians. Uh, he ate the finest foods. He had 700 wives and 300 concubines. He had tasted of every pleasure that this world has to offer. Yeah. He had ships that would travel the world to bring him rare and exotic treasures. Right. You will find that he had authority and power. He was the king in Israel. And near the end of his life, this is what he said about life. Vanity of vanities. All is vanity. Right. The word vanity simply means empty. It means uh, worthless. He does not say it is just vanity. He said it is vanity 
of vanity. Right. If you take vanity and take the vanity out of vanity, that's what he said about this yeah. life. Amen. He said that it was all empty and it was all in vain. Amen. And so, matter of fact, look at chapter number 2. Look at verse number 1. I said in mine heart, go to now, I will prove thee with myrrh. Therefore enjoy pleasure, and behold, this is also vanity. You will find, he mentions vexation of spirit in chapter number 1. You will find that he mentions the word grief in chapter number 1. And look at verse, look at verse number 17. Look at, look at chapter 2, verse 17. Look what he said. Therefore, I hated life. Solomon had everything that the world said would make him happy. He was known. He had popularity. He had power. He had pleasure. He had possessions. He had everything that the world said will make you happy and content and satisfied. And in spite of all that he had, he had possessions and homes and lands and Right. Servants and singers and the finest food, the finest clothes. And in spite of all of this, he said in verse number 17, I hated life. Mm. Mm. Now remember, this is not some dumb head down the street. Mm. This is the wisest man who ever lived. Yeah. Right. This is a man who was wiser than anybody else on the planet. And when he get when he nears the end of his life, this is what he said. I've got it all. I've tried it all. I've seen it all. I've done it all. I've built buildings. I've planted vineyards. I've uh, done everything uh, that the world says will make you happy. Right. And when he got to the end of his life, this is what he said. It's all vanity. It's all empty. And none of it means nothing. Therefore, I hated life. Right. What the text says. Right. He goes on to tell us in chapter number two. He basically said, What's the use? We're all going to die. Look at chapter two, look at verse 14. In verse 14, the wise man's eyes are in his head, but the fool walketh in darkness. And I myself perceived also that one event happeneth to them all. Verse 15, then said I in my heart, as it happeneth to the fool. So it happeneth even to me. And why was I then more wise? Then I said in my heart that this also is vain. In chapter number 3, he goes on to put it this way. In chapter, uh, chapter 3, verse number 19. For that which befalleth the sons of men befalleth beasts. Even one thing befalleth them. As the one dieth, so dieth the other. Yea, they have all one breath. So that a man hath no preeminence above a beast, for all is vanity. Verse 20, all go unto one place, all are of dust, and all turn to dust again. He's saying, man, I've got everything. I've spent my life building wealth and building buildings and, 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 and wearing the finest clothes and eating the finest food. But he said, it ain't going to do me a bit of good because I'm still going to die. Right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He said, basically, life stands. Right. <laughs> do you see it? Yeah. If not, i got a bunch more verses I can give you, but you see it. Amen. He says in chapter number 5, look at chapter number 5, look at verse number 15. This is what he said. As he came forth out of his mother's womb, Naked shall he return to go as he came, and shall take nothing of his labor which he may carry away in his hand. Yep. Yeah. He said, I spend my life laboring and working and doing and building and having and possessing and trying my best to obtain more. He said, But this is the truth I've this is the truth I've learned that I ain't gonna be able to take away. Right. 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 He said, I wasted my life chasing things that I can't take with me. Right. Right. What a realization to come to at 60, 70, 80 years old. Mm -hmm. That you look back over your life and say, I've wasted it chasing stuff. Right. I've wasted my life trying to get a bigger house, a better car, nicer clothes, better food. And now I'm here and I realize... 
that I've wasted my life. Because I'm still going to die. That's encouraging this morning, ain't it? What a blessing. We're talking about the wisest man on earth. That's the way he said about it. Solomon said that he sums up his life with vanity of vanity. All is vanity. He's way smarter and way wiser than you or I. Right. And that's how he summed up life. Mm -hmm. May I be honest with you this morning, I can certainly amen his take on life. Amen. You realize this life is filled with sorrow, yeah. disappointment, yeah. heartache, marriage trouble, yeah. children trouble, church trouble, sickness, disease, cancer, financial trouble, failure, right. flesh problems, right. spiritual problems. Right. Uh, listen, brother, uh, uh, this is what my pastor used to say many, many, I've heard him say it many, many times. He said, pray for the best, expect the worst, and thank God you're not in hell. Amen. 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 That's right. Yep. There is something about age that will turn you into a pessimist. Right. When you're young, you're an optimist. You look on the bright side. Right. When you're old, you become a pessimist. You know why? You have seen far too many things in this life yeah. go wrong. Yeah. Right. And as you get older, and as you age, you become more pessimistic in your outlook because you know something is going to tear up, something's going to fail, something bad is right. going to happen. Yeah, you're right. You yeah. buy a new vehicle, somebody will run into it. I mean, brother, if you buy a new suit, somebody will spill something on it. Yeah. I mean, brother, listen, uh, you build a house, uh, it'll burn down. Something will happen. The fact of the matter is this, bad stuff happens. Right. Amen. Amen. And I have learned to become more pessimistic in my older age. I used to be optimistic. But I, after fighting the devil and the world and the flesh all these years, I have gradually become more pessimistic. Some say the optimist says the glass is half full. The pessimist says uh, that glass is half empty. Right. The realist says that glass is dirty. <laughs> There's probably germs in the water. My point is there are issues and problems and sorrows and difficulties in this life. Listen, Solomon gets to the end of his life and he says, I've wasted my life worried about the clothes I wear, the food I eat, right. the women that I love. Mm -hmm. And when he gets to the end, man, 700 wives and 300 porcupines, as the one preacher said. <laughs> Can you imagine? Here's a man that has, that has a thousand women. Here's a man that has all the money the world says would make you happy. I mean, the rare and most exotic animals, you name it. Uh, he's got it all. Right. And when he gets to the end, this is what he says. It's all fine. Yeah. Yeah. None of it means nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Amen. That that doesn't sum up living in a sin-cursed world, I do not know what does. Amen. Yeah. Listen to me. I wish I had better news this morning. Trust me, I'm going to turn the message in just a minute. Stay with me. Some of y'all look like you're struggling a little bit now. Listen, bad stuff happens. Right. I am not one of those faith and, you know, uh, name it, claim it, everything's going to be fine. No, 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 no. You're going to have problems. Listen to me. You're on enemy territory. This is the devil, the God of this world, what the Bible calls it. I, I, when Adam and Eve messed up, I, I, the Lord allows the devil a certain amount of authority in the earth. So you've got to fight a real enemy. You live in a sin-cursed body. It is going to get old and it's going to break down. Uh, listen, I used to think when I was 20, I'd jump out of bed and everything was great. Now at almost 50, I struggle some mornings to crawl out of bed. What don't hurt, I can't feel. And uh, what don't hurt, don't work. And I'm just saying, uh, this sin, you're living on enemy territory, you're living in a sin-cursed body, and you're living in a sin-cursed world. Right. Why in the world do you expect everything to go right? right. But yet we do. Right. I'm trying to help you this morning. Stay with me. 
You are going to have problems. Why do you think the funeral home business is booming? Because people are going to die. One day, you are going to die. If you go first, I will stand up here and put your funeral. Glad. And uh, listen, if I go first, at least fake it and cry and act like you miss me. All right? <laughs> I'm just saying, bad stuff happens. That's right. You are going to face disappointment in this world. You're going to face discouragement. You're going to face the devil. You're going to face heartaches and problems and physical issues. You're going to have marriage trouble every now and then. Your kids are going to give you a fit. You're going to have to stand at the graveside and say goodbye to your mom and daddy. You're going to have problems, man. That is just the way it is. Right. Right. Okay, man. Let's bow our heads and be dismissed. What a message. Great. Go ahead. That is a fact of Right. So I have learned to be far more pessimistic in my outlook in the days in which you and I live. Right. And then you got people problems. Yep. Can I be honest? People are stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Just being honest. Yeah. You say, oh, preacher, I got a faith in humanity. This drive in Savannah for about 15 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. People are stupid. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder how they clothe themselves and feed themselves. Right. They ain't got a lick of sense. I'll just be honest. Yeah. People are nuts. Yeah. You got people who actually believe that actually want to and desire to destroy our nation. Yeah. 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 Amen. Yeah. And they think that killing 60 million babies is a good thing. Right. Right. In America. Yeah. Right. I mean, their desire is to destroy America, and they're crippled to way too high for crutches. Right. People are stupid. Yeah. Amen. You deal with them, they're nuts. Yeah. I deal with people for a living. That's my job. I deal with people. And this is what I've learned about people as a whole, not individually, but I've learned people as a whole, sometimes they don't think right. 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 I mean, just problems and burdens and sorrow. Right. Don't get me started on taxes. Right. Right. You say your house is paid for. Now I'll never get it paid for because I'm still going to pay taxes on it. Right. <laughs> you say that's your car. No, no. It belongs to the state of South Carolina. I'm still going to pay taxes on it. Right. Right. You don't really own nothing right. on this side. Right. Right. You're right. And then, listen, listen. You get through all the sorrows, burdens, and heartaches of life. Of life then you get sick and die. Yeah. Hallelujah. Right. What a blessing. Yeah. That is fact. Yeah. I'm neither, listen, I, 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 I'm far more pessimistic, but I'm a realist. Amen. This life will not last forever. Right. Now, you say, what's the point this morning? Take your Bible to Revelation chapter number 21. Hold your place in Ecclesiastes, please. Go to Revelation chapter number 21. I'll read the real verse of Scripture, please. I kind of like that introduction. I got to write and belly ache and complain. What a blessing. What a blessing. Revelation chapter number 21. Let me show you verse number 5. And he that sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things. Amen. Here is the upside. This world is not your home. We you and I are headed to a place where we'll never get sick. Right. We'll yeah. never grow old. We'll never have another burden. Right. We'll never have another doctor's visit. We'll never have to say goodbye because one day you and I are leaving this sin sick world and we are going home to be in glory forever. And we'll never have any more issues or problems or sorrow. It will all be glory on the other side. Hear me this morning. You are foolish to expect heaven here and heaven over there. Right. That's what will make heaven so sweet. Yeah. Having lived in a sin-cursed body. Having lived in a sin-cursed world. And now I have got a glorified body. And I'm living in that heavenly city. And where there will never be any more sorrows or problems or heartaches. You'll never attend another funeral. You'll never eat another pill. You'll never have another cat scan. 
You'll never shed another tear. Listen, one day after a while, we will get home to heaven where all things are made. Amen. Amen. You say, what's the point? The contrast is this. This world's not your home. Amen. Solomon even knew this. Let me show it to you. Flip back over to Ecclesiastes. Let me show you the verse. Look at Ecclesiastes chapter number 3. Look at verse number 11. <coughs> he hath made everything beautiful Amen. in his time. Amen. One day, God's going to take this train wreck of a life that you and I live, mm -hmm. and He's going to make something beautiful out of it. Right. Yeah. You're right. Yep. Yeah. And my point this morning is this. This world is not your home. Amen. If your whole confidence is in this world, you are sadly right. going to be disappointed. Right. And listen to me this morning. If your hope is in Hollywood or in the government, right. uh, you are going to be sadly disappointed. Yeah. Hear me this morning. Our only hope is Jesus. Right. But this world is not my home. I'm simply passing through. There is laid up for me uh, somewhere beyond the blue. Hear me this morning. I ain't living for this world. I don't care about this world. You know why? Because this world, even at its best, is fractured and it's broken. And it's, it'll wound and it'll hurt. And there'll be sorrow and heartache. Uh, nothing on this side will ever be perfect. Not your home, not your kids, not your marriage. Nothing's ever going to be perfect. And I refuse to invest all of my time in this world when there is another world already on the other side. That's what I'm living for. That's what I'm looking for. That's where my hope is. It is not in this old sin sick world. I don't care how much money you got. I don't care how, how clean you live. I don't care what kind of clothes you wear. There is no hope in this world. The best it can offer you is death. Death. And outside of that, there is no hope in this world. Right. Right. That's right. This ain't my home. Right. I'm a pilgrim. Right. Yeah. Amen. Now, understanding what I just gave you, I want to give you three things this morning. Number one, because the world is not your home, number one, don't get distracted. Amen. It's real easy to get tied up with yes, the things right. of this life. Yes, right? Yeah. It's real easy to spend all your time trying to make a living. It's real easy to try to stay focused on more possessions and better this and more of that and, 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 and trying to have this and trying to... Listen, as a young person, you spend half your time trying to impress people that don't even think about you. Right? Amen. Right. Yeah. They don't think about you. Right. Oh yeah. When you're young, you think everybody's looking at you, yeah. and everybody's thinking about you, right. and everybody's staring at you. Right. Then you get a little older and realize they're too distracted by themselves. They don't care about you. Right. 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 Unless you're just an absolute train wreck, they don't even think about you. Right. That's right. They could care less about your hairstyle. They could care less about your dress. They could care less about what kind of car you drive or what kind of house you live in. Right. They don't care. You know why? They've got their own issues, their own problems. Right. That's right. Listen, stop living for the approval of others. Stop living for more possessions. The wisest man who ever lived had all the possessions this world has to offer. And when he got to the end of his life, he said, it is vanity, it's empty, it's vain. None of that stuff's going to satisfy you. Now listen, you can stay focused on bigger houses, bigger cars, nicer clothes, better food. And you can spend your life living for those things. But when you get to the end of this thing, you're going to look back and say, I was wrong. Yeah. Right. I wasted my life living for things that just don't matter. Right. And by the way, if you collect all the wealth in this world, you will leave it all behind. Yeah. 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 You're right. yeah. So why, why focus on things at best are going to be broken? Right. Yeah. Right. Can I be honest? You buy a new house, guess what? If you don't touch it in 10 years, the roof will be falling in. Yeah. 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 It's broken. Why spend your life focusing on something that at best is broken? You buy a new car, 
Guess what? Eventually, the battery will die, the alternator will go out, the transmission will quit, it'll have to have tires, the paint will fade, and, 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 and listen, uh, or somebody will hit side swipe you and take the side out of it. Uh, listen, and, and so why spend all your effort, all your energy uh, on things that are broken that will not last? Right. They won't. They're not going to last. Right. Why spend all your time focusing on things that just don't matter. Yeah. <coughs> if you are not careful, the devil will distract you just like you did Solomon. Right. Right. You will spend all your effort and energy pouring all your effort and energy into this world. And then when you get into your life, you're going to say, that don't even matter. Right. Right. That don't matter! Because I'm still going to break up. And here's the problem in America. America, the devil used to fight us and persecute us. And all it did was make us stronger and better. Yeah. Then the devil got smart and said, this is what I'll do, I'll just bless them. And he's rocked us to sleep. Right. We are so enamored and so fascinated with the things of this world. Yeah. We are so concerned and worried and consumed with the things of this world. We are missing what matters. Right. Don't get rooted too deep in this world. You're not going to be here forever. Uh, don't spend your time, effort, and energy worried about fashion and, and, and opulence and, and prosperity because you're one day you're going to leave it all behind. Don't let the devil distract you from what's important. You're right, preacher. Amen. Now, if I live here, given my blood pressure, 70 years, if I'm lucky. 70 years. Right. And I'm going to pour every bit of my energy and effort into those 70 years. I'm going to be over there for eternity. Yes. Right. Billions of years. Yeah. But yet I will ignore this and put all my effort and energy into this little bitty space. Right. That's good. That's just foolish. Yeah. May I illustrate eternity? From this wall to right here is your life. From that little distance, that's your life. Yeah. Right here. From here to the other wall is eternity. Right. Yeah. That's right. Then why, in the name of common sense, are you pouring all your effort and energy into this little space? Right. When you're going to be way, you're going to be over there a whole lot longer. Yeah. And here's what the devil's going to do. He's going to distract you yeah. and try to get you to focus on this space yeah. and ignore this space. See, here's what we do. We make all sorts of preparations. Yeah. We plot and plan and scheme to try to work out things right here. But yet we make no preparation for all of this. Yeah. Right. We pour all our energy into this. To the point, you'll crawl in bed Monday night just absolutely exhausted. Oh, yeah. But you've not given any thought yeah. from right. here to there. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, listen to me. You go over there a whole lot longer. Oh, yeah. You Don't you think it would do you some good to start ignoring some things over here? Right. And start focusing on some things yeah. over here. Amen. Right. Can I be honest? All that junk you're faithful to that you wouldn't miss for love nor money, one day won't matter to a hell. Right. Yes. All that stuff you're worried about and frustrated about, and all that stuff you pour your life into, ain't gonna matter. It's just right here. That's all you get. That's it. Yeah. That's if you're lucky. Yeah. There's no guarantee you're going to be 70, so you know what you got to do? Right. Do you know how, how tragically disappointed you're going to be if yeah. all you focus on is this little space? Right. right. And you've made no preparation for this. This is what you worry about. Let's have some fun. I want to wear the nice clothes. I want to have a big house. I want to drive a nice car. But you've not even thought about it. Yeah. Right. That goes for sinner and saint alike. Yeah. The sinner is more worried about having a good time. He don't think about eternity. Right. He makes no preparation for eternity. Right. Right. He makes no plots or plans about eternity. He just yeah. focuses on having a good time. Yeah. That's right. The saints of God are the same way. All that stuff you're faithful to now ain't going to matter. Right. 
Let me tell you what you do. They're faithful to a bunch of junk that don't matter over here. While ignoring being faithful to some things that are going to matter. Right. That's nuts, man. That's crazy. That don't make no sense. Listen, you can you can be faithful to everything else, but you can't be faithful to church. Right. 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 Amen. Right. You know you know what the problem is? Listen to me. This is what you're worried about. Right. Yeah. This is what you're concerned about. Right. You say, oh, I gotta be faithful to some things over here. They don't matter. Right. Right. But then you ignore the things that do matter, right. like being faithful to church. Right. right. You focus on the temporal and are faithful to the temporal while ignoring the eternal. Yeah. Amen. You're going to be in heaven a whole lot longer than you're going to be over here. Right. Right. Amen. And if you're here this morning and you're not saved, you're going to be in hell a whole lot longer than you're going to be over here. That's Amen. Right. You got it, Amen. That's right. Don't get distracted. Amen. The devil will do everything to try to distract you from what really matters. Yes, right. sir. Preaching, May I be honest with you? I'm not against you having that stuff. I don't think the Lord is either. Right. As long as it don't capture your attention. Amen. As long as you don't live for it and focus on it right. and love it and ignore spiritual matters for right. temporal and carnal right. matters. Right. But listen, brother, to spend your life focused on this life and, and the folly of ignoring eternity, you're going to end up in a mess. Right. right. Jesus tells the story in Luke chapter 12 about a man who said, I, 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 I've got plenty and I've got no place to store my goods. So I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll turn up my barns and build bigger ones. He was focused on the, the temple. And God comes to him and said, Thou fool! Tonight thy soul shall be required of thee. Amen. Stop focusing on the temple. Focus on the eternal. Right. Amen. Because this life could be over. That's right. Just like that. Yep. That's right. You said, when I get old, I'll do that. You might not live to be old. That's right. What if Jesus comes? That's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's good. Stop worrying. I understand you got to make a living. I understand you got mouths to feed. I understand you got bills. But ain't stupid. But by the same token, we ought not pour ourselves into this little bitty space. And ignore all of eternity. Right. That's crazy. That's right. And the devil will distract you and get you focused on that little bitty space while you ignore eternal matters. Right. Right. You say, I gotta be faithful to a bunch of stuff that don't matter. You say, I gotta be faithful to this little space, but you won't even be faithful to read your Bible. Right. You're ignoring the eternal and focusing on the car. Yeah. Right. Listen, I cut about 12 acres of grass. I try to be faithful to it. When it gets long, you can ask Nanny, ask my wife. I go crawl on the lawnmower if it's 185 degrees and almost burst into flames. I go crawl on the lawnmower, fill it up with fuel. I get on there, I cut that 12 acres of grass, takes two and a half, three hours on a zero turn. And I stand out there in the, in the heat and bake. I try to be faithful to it, Brother Mike, because it needs to be done. But you realize, if I've got a choice between reading my Bible and cutting my grass, I'm going to read my Bible. Amen. Then I'm going to cut my grass. Right. The problem is you're focused on the grass and ignoring your Bible. Right. You're focused on the latest fashion. Some of y'all, it would be obscene if we saw your Amazon account. By God, the Amazon delivery guy knows you by right now. Right. Sends you a birthday call. Y'all don't tell me that. Amen. And we're worried about all oh, this stuff. It's just this, this much space. But we won't spend 15 minutes praying. Right. Right. We won't get on our face and talk to God. We'll be faithful to school. We'll be faithful to work, but we won't even pray. Right. Amen. We are ignoring the eternal for a space about like that. Right. My point is love what matters. Amen. Get faithful to what matters. Yeah. Be consistent to what matters. Don't worry about being consistent to a bunch of stuff that ain't going to matter. Be consistent to the Lord. Right. 
Be consistent to prayer. Be consistent to read your Bible. Be consistent to church. Be consistent to be a witness. We focus on all this little bitty stuff and, and we pour our hearts into this yeah. with no thought. Right. Yeah. Don't get distracted. Number two, good. don't be discouraged. Amen. This life is filled with problems. Yeah. Burdens. Yeah. If you're not careful, they will discourage you. Yeah. Right. Struggles, battles, burdens, heartaches, difficulties, uh, fighting the devil. I mean, brother, just struggling. Uh, it seems like every step of the way. It seems the man, Job said this, man born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. Amen. It's a fact. But don't let it discourage you. You know why? Heaven's your home. Right. You're going home to heaven. And brother, one day when this life is over, you will be glad that you lived for God and endured and, 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 and fought through the struggles and the battles and the burdens and you kept on living for God and serving the Lord. Oh, listen, three minutes on the other shore. You'll be glad that you stayed faithful and lived for God. Don't be discouraged this morning. Be encouraged. Our God's on the throne. He's never failed. He's never let you down. And one day He'll make everything beautiful in His Every heartache, every burden, every sorrow will be worth I, all that you went through just to get home to heaven. Hear me this morning. It will be worth every mile of the journey once we get home. Right. Don't get discouraged. Don't, don't get distracted. Right. Hear me this morning. Listen, there's more important things than what colors are cool this fall. Can I be honest? I just like certain colors. That's what I wear. I right. really don't care a whole lot about right. fashion. This is what the Bible says about fashion. The fashion of this world passes away. Yeah. 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 Don't matter. Not important. Right. And this morning, listen, I, I, I preached last week on a preacher. I look like a preacher. You ought to dress right. Look right. Absolutely. I'm all for that. Uh, uh, listen, but I'm not going to pour my effort and my energy into, in, into something that's going to fade away one day. Right. Right. Can I be honest? I buy new suits every couple of years because the way I preach, I end up ruining them. They, they end up, you sweat in them and you can't take them to dry cleaners them so many times. But listen, why, why would I spend my life pouring into something and in two years ain't going to be worth wearing no way? Right. Right. That's right. Listen, man, there's going to be problems. Don't be discouraged. Amen. The Lord is with you. He knows exactly what He's doing. Mm -hmm. Hang in there. Live for God. You will find that Solomon uh, learns this great truth and said he makes everything beautiful in his time. Listen, don't get distracted. Don't get discouraged. But number three and lastly, don't get deceived. Look at chapter number three, verse number 17. I want to show you this. Ecclesiastes 3, 17. I'm done. Look at verse number 17. I said in my heart, God shall judge the righteous and the wicked. Don't be deceived. This life is not all there is. Yep. When you leave this life, whether you go by way of the grave or way of the rapture, you're going to have to stand before God and give an account of the life you live. Right. Yeah. That's, right. That's what y'all focus on. Yeah. This world ends with a, in a head-on collision yeah. with Almighty God. Yeah. And you will stand before Him while He sits on the throne and you will give an account. The Lord's going to say, why did you focus on this and ignore it? Right. You want to do it. Don't be deceived. Amen. You get so busy living this life, you completely forget that one day I've got to stand before the Redeemer, the Savior. Yeah. 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 Don't you let the devil deceive you into thinking this is all there is because it ain't. That's right. When you're young, you focus on this. Right. Don't waste your life focusing on this life. Mm -hmm. Understand you got to eat. I'm stupid. Mm -hmm. Understand you got to have a place to live and you got to have a car. I, I get all. I get all that. I get all that. But let's not get so wrapped up right. in the things of this world yeah. that we completely forget that we don't have to stand for God. That's right. right. Now, let me ask you this as Nicole comes. Let me ask you this question. How'd you do this week? Amen. Did you 
Did you spend all your time focusing on this? Or what are you concerned about today? How'd you do with prayer? How'd you do with prayer? Reading the Bible. How'd you do with this? Right. How'd you do? Right. What were you focused on? Were you focused on this? Were you focused on this? Were you tied up and, and wrapped up in this? Or did you get some thought for this? Listen, I'm a Georgia fan. Go Dodgers. I like them. Never even watched the play. Never, never even got to watch him play. You know why? I'm not worried about this. Right. I'm worried about this. That's good. I spent my day yesterday focusing on this, not this. Yeah. I'm not against you watching the Bulldogs play. And if next Saturday, if I got all my stuff done, uh, then I'll sit down and watch some of it. I'm not against you watching football. What I am saying, if you're more worried about the, the Georgia Bulldogs than you are about going to heaven and standing before God, you've got a problem, you got a problem, you got a problem. Right. If you love the Bulldogs more than you love Jesus, you've got a problem. Can I say this? If you love Trump more than you love Jesus, you've got a problem. Right. I'm a Trump guy, I'm voting for him. I make no bones about it, but he is not my savior. Right. Amen. He is not the Messiah. He is not the fixer of mankind's problems. Amen. Only Jesus can fix it. Amen. I love him. I'm voting for him. I believe he's doing a great job. I'm all for it. Amen. But he is not my Savior. That's right. That's right. You, how'd you do this way? Has this been your focus? Where has this been? How'd you do with reading the Bible? How'd you do with prayer? How'd you do with witness? How'd you do with being faithful this past week to church? Have you been focusing on this? Been focusing on this. this life will soon be over. Right. And all that's going to matter is what you do for Jesus. Right. Amen. So how you doing? As we stand, Father, we sure do love you. We sure are grateful for the good word of God. Father, we're thankful for your people. This morning, may you keep our minds set where it's supposed to be. Help us, Lord, not to get discouraged. Help us not to get distracted. But, Father, help us not to be deceived. That, Lord, this life will soon be over. And, Lord, help us to focus on the eternal things, not the temporal. Help us to focus on the, focus on the spiritual, not the carnal. Lord, one day this life's going to be over. And it might be today. Father, it might be this week. This might be our last day. Lord, if it's not, if we do live to be 60, 70, 80 years old, I don't want to look back on my life and say I wasted it focusing on things that just don't matter. God, help us. Give us an eternal perspective. Change our hearts and our minds. Help us to focus on what's to come, not what is. Lord, we know you're sovereign. You're going to take care of us. You're going to look after us. You're going to be there for us. You're going to see us through. Lord, we know that. Help us to... Uh, that's why the Bible tells us, seek ye first, first of the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things will be added in John 6, 33. Lord, help us to focus on the eternal and give you the temple. Lord, we can trust you with us. Help us not get so wrapped up in this life that we forget about the life that is to come. We will stand before you one day and give an account. Dear God, may you help us and give us the right perspective. Father, may you help those that need to come. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. How'd you do this week? Amen. Have you focused? Where's your focus been? If your focus ain't right, if it wasn't right this week, come on. Listen, it happens to the best of us when we stay focused. You need to come? Why don't you come and do business with the Lord as she sings?
going to be over. Eternity's a mighty long time. Why don't you come to Jesus this morning and trust Him as your Savior? Won't you get an eternal perspective instead of a temporal perspective? Focus on the spiritual, not the carnal. Are you saved? If you ain't saved, won't you come? Somebody take a Bible so you got to be saved. If you are saved, ask the Lord to help for a Bible and get you focused. Listen, there's no, listen, I don't have a problem with you, your kids playing sports. I, I really don't. I think it's a blessing to teach us them some time. But if you're pouring into your kid's life to make him the next Tiger Woods, I bet you don't tell him about Jesus. Right. If you make a sport a priority right. over church, you know what you're telling your children? Carnal stuff is more important right. than eternal right. stuff. Right. Be mindful on that. Yep. If you're telling, listen, if you teach her how to put on her makeup, teach her how to do her hair, teach her how to dress right, but you don't teach her how to, how to love Jesus and about eternal things, you've missed it. Teach them how to cut a board and how to uh, how to build something. All that's essential. All that's great knowledge for a young person, for a daddy to teach his boys how to build a house and how to saw a board and how to build and how to lay tile and how to how to do all of that. All that's wonderful. But if you teach them all of that, but you never teach them about eternity and heaven and hell, Jesus and the cross and the Bible's truth. You've missed it. Just say, be careful. Don't get 